Hey what's going on guys, it's Fisara here and in this video we're going to be talking all about the Techno Phantom X. I've been using this phone for over a week now from before it launched and you know since it came out. This is an upgrade to the Techno Phantom 9 which I've also reviewed on this channel. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. If I remember correctly, the Phantom 9 which was also launched around the same time had an AMOLED display. This one right here has a super AMOLED display plus 90 hertz, basically better than any other Techno devices display on the market right Right now it's curved a first for techno 2 it's got a whopping 50 megapixel back camera with laser autofocus gorilla glass 5 on the front and the back quite a really big step for techno devices in this video we're going to go over the features of this smartphone my initial use what you get when you spend on a phone like this if you're new to the channel welcome and if you're subscribed welcome back do give this video a thumbs up so more people can see you know all the details we're about to share here without further ado Let's get to the video. The box of the Techno Phantom X is much bigger than what you would normally get. Taking the wrap off, we get to a paper reading for the ones who are worth it. Okay. Inside the box, which smells nice by the way. You first get the case which is quite flexible. Taking it up close, it looks like we've got a leather or leatherette finish on the case on the back with the Phantom X branding. It also smells nice out of the box, you know, probably because I've not used it that long. And the texture is on point here. Of course, it's designed by Orimo. Putting the case back and taking the device out, it's got a wrapper with the Phantom X branding. We'll put it to the side for now to look at the rest of the items in the box. Each and every item is color coded blue and has icons for each segment or you know item. The first box has the headphones and the charging cable icon which the charging cable is a USB-C one with orange accents. The headphones feel solid and has some heft to them which gives me hope. It's got a silver accent on the ear section, the control section and the section that plugs into the phone. It looks good. The next item which deserves its own box is the huge 33 watt charger, also with orange accents that should get you from 0 to 70% of battery life in 30 minutes. I did my own charging test, I tested it myself with this charger that comes in the box and I'll share the results much later in this video. The last box has the SIM ejector tool and the 12 plus 1 month warranty. That's everything in the box that we get and now to the device. When it comes to the color option to the Techno Phantom X, this is the Van Gogh Starry Blue and the other option is the Monet Summer. My version looks really nice if I'm being honest. I also like the pin stripe pattern on the back, you know, that it has. It's not just a flat drawn pattern but you can actually feel it in your hands with the striped grid. Now the thing that gets me with this device is that the front and the back are curved glass. They're not just glass but curved gorilla glass. That shows some sort of effort to me and it and it's cool. All right, we're in the beach quality segment and the right side of the phone has the power button with the volume rockers. You know, there's nothing on the left side of the phone and the bottom is where we get the two antenna lines, a headphone jack, microphone, USB-C port and the speaker grill. Unfortunately, in what felt like a downgrade, the Phantom X has only one speaker which is the one at the bottom and not a stereo speaker setup. The top has one antenna line, the microphone port and the slot for an expandable storage and two nano sim cards the back has that triple camera array that totally eliminates the two megapixel filler cameras that we don't need or use here we've got a huge 50 megapixel camera and that's the main sensor we get the 8 megapixel 120 degree ultra wide camera and a 13 megapixel 50 millimeter portrait lens that can help with telephoto shots. I realized that when I switch to the portrait mode, there uh, you know, there's some zoom and that's simply you know the lens switching. We also get a laser autofocus system to help focus better and faster in videos and photos. We have the rear flash and of course the techno phantom branding on the back. At the front side of things, we get a dual camera setup, 8 megapixel ultra wide camera and 48 megapixel selfie camera plus the selfie flashlight. I like the case that comes with the device, uh, you know, that comes with it. It's sleek looking and protects the corners while retaining the quality and clarity of the edge of the display. It also smells nice. Keep in mind that this camera's lens cover on the back protrudes quite well. It's a huge camera bump. Even with the case, it still protrudes. And while that will rock on a flat surface, I think it has its advantages. You know, one of which is the fact that because you have a glass display and cover on the back, this device would get slippery. And if it falls and breaks, well, it's, it's all glass. That would be quite bad. But this is Gorilla Glass, so you're, 
you're kind of safe. The protrusion, I think, helps hold the phone in place when it's in your hand so it doesn't fall down. Yeah, it's big, but something has to hold 50 megapixels and all these cameras and elements. Techno Phantom X's display is the star of the show here. It's the thing that's the unique selling point of this device. With what they're calling the 3D borderless design or just the curved display. This right here is a super AMOLED display. It's not, not LCD or any of that stuff. It's 6.7 inches in size, 91.3% screen to body ratio, guys. Thanks to that curved screen, you're getting a much more premium look and definitely more screen real estate. This reminds me of many devices and one it reminds me of the most is the Mi Note 10 from Redmi. You know, quite some similarities I must say and again, while curved displays have you know predated this device coming from the samsung s series of old and many of their recent flagships this device by techno is one to appreciate your palm or any part of your hand resting on your screen is pretty much fine you know when scrolling it has very good palm rejection it's solid here as far as the edge uh, the screen going to the edge is concerned resolution is set at 1080 by 2340 it's a 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio display that's simply just how tall it is versus how wide it is it's also got one of the sharpest dense displays for a techno device the number of pixel per inches here is 385 which is quite high for techno it's also really good enough for navigation and that 90 hertz screen shines through quite well and it even looks much better or appealing when it's in dark mode the amoled screen of course you know as i said it shines through in those deep blacks and your battery is saved and you will have dark mode to thank for that when light isn't you know underneath but it's only being emitted the way an oled should i watched high quality youtube videos on here you can stream 4k content of course and i played some games to see how i could push the phantom x to its limits i think it's safe to say that the phantom x has got good viewing angles even with the curved edge and that camera cut out content looked good on here i found reading to be very interesting and you know very nice on here both scrolling wise zooming wise consuming image content typing also had pretty decent haptics better than other devices from the brand's recent past i did find out that some apps or maybe games may not display in full screen in a bit to not be too close to the hole punch camera this for me was a little bit awkward but thankfully that didn't happen with my call of duty sessions another thing i noticed while viewing stuff with this display is that the sound even while it's loud you only get one speaker at the bottom because it's only one speaker if you're playing games or watching stuff horizontally you will block it unknowingly I did block it many times when I was gaming and this was kind of annoying for me because it felt kind of like a letdown especially considering the price tag and considering that you know just the last Camon device had stereo speakers. Just like the Infinix Note 10 Pro and the Techno Camon 17 Pro, you get MediaTek's Helio G95 on here, on the, on the Techno Phantom X. We've seen how it started as a gaming focused processor, an octa-core one at that with 12 nanometers and good enough graphics processor. MediaTek places it as a premium 4G gaming processor and thankfully, phone holds up you can go up to 10 gigs of ram but you get 8 gigs of ram on here which is quite large and good enough although significant portion will be used by the android os the launcher google services but that's fine it didn't deter multitasking for me i was able to resume apps where i left off for a short while and it was just good enough storage space for me was also 256 gigabytes also plenty and if it seems like it's not enough you have an expandable storage slot so you can effectively double your storage to half a terabyte while the processor can also support up to 64 megapixel for your camera techno didn't push it with the 50 megapixel camera on here they simply give us just enough and we'll test it out soon you have android 11 with techno's high west 7 6. The user interface feels a bit more vibrant thanks to that AMOLED display. I like the app drawer and how smooth the scrolling is. Again, thanks to that 90Hz display, of course, you know, it, it's, it's a good thing. It's not without its faults though. For the first few days I had this phone, I didn't get too much blower notifications or anything like that for the first few days. After a while, I did start getting them and consistently too. I know this is a software thing that I'm complaining about, but you can simply turn them off individually in the notification settings of your phone. One thing I also noticed that caught my design eyes or, you know, <laughs> was, was the fact that the time was being displayed at the top of the phone and it was a little too close to the camera, to the dual camera setup. 
almost at the center of the phone. I don't know how I feel about this, but it's a thing that I thought to just point out. Some of the features you get on here that Techno is also touting are language translation features with either speech, text, images, or phrases. Then there's live transcribe feature that will write whatever you're saying out and you, you, know, you can copy and paste or edit or just send to someone. For instance, you can say, don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel. And to write it out there's also ella which techno is starting as well basically going into the voice assistant game just like we've got siri bixby you know google assistant this new virtual assistant here is called ella so for instance you can just go hey remind me to wake up at 7 a.m tomorrow an alarm for tomorrow seven has been set for you it's all right they all work quite all right but they aren't yet as sophisticated as google assistant or siri or anything like that however for basic commands you will get some fanciness out of this essentially seeing this list uh, these are all the things that ella can do you know make phone calls send pictures to whatsapp open apps set alarms and reminders plus more so the g95 is a gaming centric processor if you've watched my previous review video about the camon 17 pro which also has the same processor you know the gaming prowess of uh, this guy it's pretty much on par with this very solid gaming quality performance and you know it's also solid display wise i didn't experience any lag except for situations where my own data speeds dropped like the previous devices when you try to max out the graphics you can't max out the frame rates and when you try to max out the frame rate you won't be able to maximize the graphics quality my usual call of duty online sessions ran for an hour uh, the first 30 minutes of gaming got me from 29 percent to 16 percent which is a loss of 13 percent and an hour of gaming was down to two percent so another 14 percent hypothetically you should be getting three and a half to four hours of heavy duty gaming on this phone the phantom x is said to have liquid cooling feature so the cpu or the processor's temperature will be three to five degrees lower than normal i did find that during my gaming sessions though the phone got considerably warm to the touch almost getting to 35 degrees or even more although it didn't go out of hand but that's something i observed it was warm enough to warrant my statement in this video and trust me i played games a lot on this guy standby time is really good on here with regards to the overall battery usage day-to-day -day use will net you around solid eight hours with moderate or even more use if your usage isn't all that heavy you should get a decent amount of time on here it's a 4700 milliamp hour battery too so it's not as big as some of its predecessors or even the competition but it's plenty enough with the 33 watt charger on here according to techno you should go from zero percent or you know dead flat battery to 70 percent in 30 minutes but that was not exactly the case for me here's how my own charging speed went in 15 minutes increments from 0 to 32 percent in 15 minutes up to 58 percent in 30 minutes 83 percent in 45 minutes and 97 percent in one hour it got totally full to 100 percent in one hour and seven minutes so my 30 minutes charge was more around 60 percent than 70 percent it might be more or less for you but it's still not bad at all in an hour you're already getting 97 percent from zero percent that's not something you see every day especially on many competitors and many techno phones when it comes to the unlocking method of the phantom x regular methods like the pattern the pin password are there you can also choose to not use any of them and just you know simply swipe or unlock your phone with a button the main unlocking methods we use though the fingerprint reader and the face unlock methods were kind of underwhelming but not so bad on here you guys know i'm a huge fan of the power button being the fingerprint reader it's what we've seen recently you know we've seen it on things like the camon 17 pro which has the same processor as this guy it's a physical button it's fast it's on the side this right here is an on-screen fingerprint reader same with the techno phantom 9 and i get it that you know many high-end android devices are doing this however the on-screen fingerprint reader does take a little bit more time to unlock on here and it's not so instant you can't just press it and remove your hand and it's unlocked you have to press it and hold for a bit the face unlock also did you know well to be fair to one would say it's even faster than the on-screen fingerprint reader but hey they work it's not super slow as i mentioned earlier the phantom x comes with a triple camera setup on the back and a dual camera setup up front starting with the front we've got 48 megapixel wide camera and an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera you can expect 
1080p videos at 30 frames per second and of course 4k videos the back side of the phone is where we've got the upgrade 50 megapixel main wide sensor that also supports their new dual pixel autofocus and laser autofocus with that tiny module that you see on the edge of the camera bump 13 megapixels telephoto lens to help with portrait mode also it works well with autofocus and the 2x zoom as expected 8 megapixels ultra wide which it's more or less the underperforming one in terms of quality, but it will still capture a 120 degree wide angle photo in decent enough quality. You've got a quad LED flash as well, and you can expect to get 4K 30 and 1080p 60 FPS shots out of this guy. In the camera app though, you've got the super night mode, which will see the results shortly. It even has a tripod setting if your phone is stationary, which will enhance the quality of your night shots. You've got video mode, which you can go all the way up to 4K with the 50 megapixels enabled lens and the other lenses top at 1080p. You can't switch between lenses when recording. You have normal camera mode for shots. You've got beauty mode for skin smoothening effects, portrait mode, which works with the 30 megapixel lens, ultra HD for higher quality images, film mode, slow motion mode, for up to 90 frames per second which when i tested it out it looked a bit like optical flow rather than an actual frame by frame capture and the video quality was 720p so it's less than full hd the front camera has these modes except document scanning which is understandable you can't scan a document with a selfie camera and uh, the front camera slow motion is capped at 240 frames per second and the ultra mode is 48 megapixels the back camera is 50 megapixels you, you get the idea indoors selfies are usually okay with a little bit of redness or saturation i also compared the images with those i took on a very higher end device and here's how it looked it's clear that techno you know they're prioritizing the face and you know at least for selfies and not the face and the background at the same time this is the same with many of the predecessors this is the same thing with videos as well outdoors though these images look really good with that selfie camera and the light you know the right lighting it comes really really clear it's also clear that the ultra wide camera has a little lesser quality but it's still fair in the right lighting Portrait mode also does look fair, although it's got its own share of overexposure. As I mentioned, video quality from the front camera is fairly decent as well, and it overexposes for the face and not the face plus the background. How's it going guys? So this is the front facing camera video quality of the Techno Phantom X. This is a 4K 30 frames per second recording. Let me know what you guys think about this video quality as well as the audio quality. As you can see, it has a very terrible case of overexposure. This is the actual background and it's blowing everything out because it wants to keep my face in focus. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below. The front camera can also record in a wider angle with the smaller 8 megapixels but the quality is of course lesser. With regards to the back camera, these images came out looking sharp and colorful. In portrait mode you would definitely get a decent background blur plus that foreground cutout but the overexposure still remains. One thing I noticed with regards to the imagery is that the main lens has got cool details for the shots and you know when I use the ultra HD mode the shots I got had a fair amount of contrast, a bit of black to it. While the back camera's 4K image quality is definitely colorful and can be cinematic, exposure really deals a blow to all of those numbers on paper. This was an occurrence over and over again, and you know that the quality of 4K is more saturated and more colorful than 1080p, and yes, it can zoom all the way up to 10x with some grain. Now, getting this guy would definitely have you recording more in 4K. It would double the storage space that you would have to use if you were recording only in 1080p before. Night mode shots again were super dope, no qualms in that aspect. You get quality as far as you're able to hold your hands steady. All in all, I found it to capture better than many other predecessors, at least from before the Camon 17 Pro. Let me know what your thoughts are about all these things I've mentioned, the sample images, and all of the features in the comment section below. The Techno Phantom X comes at a very steep price of $457 if you're looking at dollars from the black market rates. You can tell that Techno is appealing to the wider mid-range audience. They've brought a bunch of Nigerian celebrities on stage when they were announcing it in Nigeria and I'm sure they had a huge budget for them. They really have a huge commitment to this device and they really have some competition. So they want to prove something with the Techno Phantom X, bringing that curved display and the new 
look and feel. One thing that stood in the way uh, is the overexposure on the cameras. For me, I would have loved the side mounted fingerprint reader as well, rather than an on screen fingerprint reader that is slower. It's also the fact that gaming with this, uh, that gaming with this device does get warm, but I hope it's not a cause for concern in the long run. Other than that, it's a great buy if you're in the market for a very dope display with loud speakers, which you might unfortunately block since it's just one speaker at the bottom and it's not too like a recent predecessor. <laughs> it's great to see that Techno is going this route with the curved display and not just the screen, the back is also curved as well, Gorilla Glass. So it's premium. User experience is better. The Super AMOLED display and a 90 Hz display that is here to stay. All in all, it's a decent package. What are your thoughts about the Techno Phantom X? Is this something that you would love to get if you had the money for it? Do you think it's overpriced or do you think it's priced right? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you have any questions about this device, please let me know in the comment section. I'll be there chatting with you guys and answering your questions. Do leave a like if you found this video useful and please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll be the first to know when I post a new video. This has taken a while. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the very next one.